What's your minimum specification? Hi everyone, I'm Ian Cutris and you're watching Tech Tech Potato. Today our topic is why can't you buy a NUC style PC with an AMD chip inside? I recently made a tweet about this which has got quite a bit of traffic so I'm here to clarify what I meant in that tweet and also take you through exactly what I mean by an AMD style NUC and why we're not perhaps seeing as many in the market as we might, as we perhaps should have. So NUC is the name that Intel gives to its next unit of computing. It's something that kind of looks like this, um, you know, four or five inches square, a couple of inches deep. And um, inside you've got a 15 watt mobile uh, CPU. Some of the larger ones have 45 um, watt versions. And then recently we saw Ghost Ca Intel launch Ghost Canyon. Um, which is their sort of uh, PC on a PCIe card, but you also have another PCIe slot for a discrete graphics card. Um, so Intel makes the Nook, and then around that there are families of Nook style PCs. So this one here is what they call the Gigabyte Bricks. Uh, the Gigabyte Bricks has been around for the best part of five years. Um, I've also got an Asus Mini PC here. Um, so this ha this one has a 6th uh, gen Core i7, this one has an 8th gen Core i3, um, I currently use this one as my Steam cache right now and this one is a, like a mini HPC. Um, and you know, they all variants of a design, some of them will accept uh, 2.5 inch SSDs, some of them will have M.2 slots, some of them will allow you to adjust the Wi-Fi. Uh, there are variants with um, mobile graphics inside. Um, back in the day, I think even Gigabyte launched one with a, like a mini projector inside. Um, yeah, but there are many companies like this and Zotac and uh, there are a few very specific regional ones, um, regional companies that just focus on the demands for the, that region. Um, and you know, these um, you know, consumer and commercial type devices, um, I'll buy them as a, you know, an end user because I need one for a specific unit. Um, but Intel's main business here is in the commercial side and what I mean by commercial is uh, the verticals like education and commerce, uh, digital signage, uh, medical, uh, we might even see some in you know um, gambling machines or whatever because it's just a very small easy to use unit of computing, NUC next unit of computing. Um, so when Intel uh, has these NUCs, they don't actually manufacture them themselves. That gets outsourced to a company called ECS or Elite Group Computer Systems. Um, and Intel will work with ECS to design what needs fit the market and then ECS will go build them and it's actually quite funny because ECS has its own line of mini PCs um, kind of in this same sort of form factor called the Lever series. They're actually a, even tiny smaller than that. Um, but sometimes we'll see <laughs> leaks about upcoming NUCs from ECS. Uh, that's quite amusing. So what we see on the market now is a lot of um, Intel based NUCs. They've all got Intel mobile processors inside and there are very few with uh, AMD processors, processors inside. I remember going into Fry's in 2016 seeing uh, Gigabyte's AMD style bricks um, with a, a Richland core inside. This is you know before Zen. Um, and you know, I was amazed to see it on the shelves. It was in, you know, they, they'd styled it in red and they had an NVIDIA one with green. Um, and, but this was, you know, 2016, this was quite a few years ago. And, you know, most of the mini PCs we see today, um, you know, with AMD stuff, I mean, that I see, we saw one at CES with Zotac. Zotac had a Picasso based system. Now, Picasso is last generation uh, AMD, not current generation when Renoir AMD. Um, so what we see in the market is mostly Intel and uh, you know part of this video is to address what people interpreted in my tweet this week. So what I tweeted um, was it's just a reply to somebody else. I just said uh, some of the more prominent NUC vendors get incentives uh, to not build AMD versions or delay them. Um, and a lot of people took what I meant by when I say incentives was that Intel was perhaps doing something illegal with money or whatnot. And I want to say why I use the word incentive, because um, there's a very distinct, you know, legal side of def definition to that. And part of that comes down to is how these companies work together, how they cooperate together. So if we take, say, the laptop market, for example, um, Intel will have a relationship with Lenovo, HP, Dell. 
And this relationship goes just beyond selling a chip. It's from co-design, they'll have engineers together, they'll have ref Intel will have reference designs, so the Lenovo will look at those reference designs, um, and the engineers will work together to make sure they get the best out of their hardware. So there'll be some co-design, uh, you know, Lenovo will manufacture it, uh, they'll sell the device and get the revenue for the mar and the margin for the product. Intel will, will sell the uh, CPU into that device, maybe they'll sell the Wi-Fi as well, maybe uh, some Thunderbolt or some Ethernet, um, but they also get, you know, to have the Intel sticker on the device. And so aside from the co-design, uh, there's also co-marketing. Uh, so Intel will promote Lenovo systems as, you know, uh, our partners make this sort of device. Whereas Lenovo will do marketing that say, hey, we have these devices powered by Intel. They'll leverage each other's marketing and brand name um, to, their own to their own ends, but also um, they do co-events and co-sponsorship at trade shows. So uh, if Lenovo does a gaming event, for example, um, Intel might co-sponsor that. Um, and so we'll end up with a lot of Intel systems on the show floor or at events if uh, you know Lenovo or HP or Dell has uh, an event at a trade show um, intel might co-sponsor that booth so they'll pay part of the you know booth fee or they'll provide some assets to assist with marketing all this idea of leveraging the brand name with each other and you know and these are what intel calls you know their premium technology partners and depending on how long you've uh, been working with intel you may be a bronze partner a silver partner gold platinum double platinum or however it goes um, the higher up you are that chain the more access you get to early information regarding upcoming products the better access you get to engineers when you're co-designing these products the better leveraging you have of um, the marketing message and the marketing materials and perhaps it'll be part of a bigger contract where you'll you know you'll co-sponsor each other's booths at events or um, you know end caps in stores uh, you know that sort of thing it's it's usually quite a big agreement so that each company benefits um, from the other and generates more revenue together they work together um, so the question is then well if if a company is a premium technology partner you know double platinum level or whatever um, what happens if that company wants to go and make an a, a, a similar style device but with a competitor's silicon inside well I mean obviously Intel's not going to be too happy you've taken all this information you know all the Intel roadmaps and what have you um, and you're going to make a competitive product in the same market that's going to take market share away from them um, so perhaps Intel does, decides not to work with you as closely before or they won't do as much co-marketing with you and you know and there's this sort of thing now um, exchanging money for this sort of thing, you know, is it, to, to stop you developing products based on competitive silicon. Yeah, I'm not a lawyer, but as far as I'm aware, that's technically illegal. But the removal of these incentives, as far as I'm aware, isn't illegal. I mean, other companies do. We see this in the GPU space, right? Uh, AMD will have AMD only vendors uh, for their GPUs. Nvidia will have Nvidia only vendors for their GPUs. Um, we see it in the white goods industry. We, we see it in uh, home appliances. We see it in car dealerships. You know, the Toyota dealership is a premium Toyota partner, and they get the benefits therein. And if they start becoming, you know, half Toyota, half Ford, what have you. Uh, then they've got to contend with perhaps not uh, not as much cooperation from those companies rather than if they would be a single vendor um, so the reason why this has perhaps come about is a little story for you um, i was at the ifa trade show a few years ago uh, so ifa is based in berlin um, i say it's a trade show it's more of a public show um, it's primarily focused for public experiences so they have a day for the press and the trade and then the, the next three days it's just mostly for the public um, you know to play with all the new equipment all you know all the new washing machines all the new food blenders but there's also pc stuff you know smartphones and laptops and tvs and that sort of thing um, so i'm at ifa i'm at a vendor's booth um, ifa has like 26 halls so or, you know, a vendor can have a whole haul if they decide to pay enough money 
Um, and I go in. I go into this vendor's booth, and around around me, you know, there's a bunch of systems, and um, I see one of their key gaming products um, up on you know one of the one of the sides, and uh, it's based on Intel. And then there's one next to it that's based on AMD. And I thought, great, because both companies had just launched new platforms at the time, um, and I and I knew that these systems had some custom motherboard design in. I mean, OEMs create their own motherboards to a large extent, so I, I wanted to see if, on have, see if I could have a look. Um, the Intel one uh, had its side panel taken off, and I could see inside, and that was great, and I could see, you know, GPU and the memory layout and all the different controls that we're using. Um, the AMD one had its panel closed off, so I go to the guy and I said, can you open the panel? And he turned around and he said, no. So I went, oh, okay. Yeah, and kind of went away for a bit and thought about it and i came back to him a few minutes later and i said well why why can i not see inside i can see inside the intel why can't i see inside the amd and he was very frank with me i'm not sure if he was a direct employee of the company or somebody they just bought in um they just brought in to you know show off the stuff to the public but he said look around you who's sponsoring this booth right who's who's got some of their marketing material up and i looked around and it's all blue and um, I was looking around and I realised there's not a lot of AMD systems in this booth. And he turned around, he turned around and said, well, that's because they're co-sponsoring the booth. You know, they'd much rather we had their products out on shelf than anybody else's. So, so you know, combining that with what I know in the industry or what people have told me, you know, these incentives exist. Um, Intel and other companies, um, I specifically say Intel because Intel's been in the news about this recently, is... Uh, they have what's called a marketing discretionary fund or mdf and you may hear this uh, be used with companies that are partners um you know if they want to you know go do an event intel will supply uh, some mdf which is essentially um you know incentives for them to promote intel and reduce their costs or you know it um it's it's that sort of thing and you know amd does it for certain stuff and nvidia does it for certain stuff and it's not new it's part of the tech industry um so when i say incentives this is what i mean now one of the reasons why we're not seeing amd uh nux you know going back to the nux story why why aren't we seeing amd nux um well it's to be honest i've spoken with amd a few times about this you know when are your Renoir um, chips going into uh, mini PCs and embedded type devices? And they turned around and said, well, at the minute, all of our volume is going into laptops. That's where they see the highest margin. That's where they see the highest potential for volume growth. And that's the market they want to be in. So every Renoir chip that they're making off, um, you know, the manufacturing lines at TSMC, they're going to the laptop vendors and laptop vendors are putting them into laptops because um, that's they can get the most money from that and you know AMD is doing co-design as we've seen with uh, Asus and the Zephyrus G14 they're doing co-design with those sorts of devices and uh, you know those companies will have access to you know design schematics and uh, reference designs from AMD uh, so given that you know take Zotac at CES like I said earlier Zotac had uh, this Picasso based mini PC on display now that w Picasso is a year old at that point and it's only now they're getting to the point where they're launching Picasso based mini PCs and you know and Zotac was quite honest it's like well this is the design cycle that we take and this is you know how long it's taken us to get enough you know Picasso type chips to be able to put them into systems and then I asked about you know when is Renoir going to come into systems and they said ask again next year um so you know true so we're looking at this and saying well is there a conspiracy against amd to make mini pcs you know i i i, I would love something like this with the renoir chip inside uh, as i'm sure you know hundreds of you would but is hundreds enough to actually go into the market for amd right now they're more interested in going into the laptop market so they're not putting resource businesses behind mini pcs they're not working with the likes of zotac and others um, to make these mini PCs whereas Intel you know they've got a very long and structured and embedded nook design they sell so many of these into the commercial markets um, that for them you know it's worth it to still be on the bleeding edge this is why we're seeing uh, nooks with the latest uh, 45 watt processors 
um, we're seeing designs you know with the latest 15 watt comet lake processors and um, no doubt we'll see you know 10 nanometer designs as well um, aside from um, Cannon Lake so again is, is 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 there is there a conspiracy here no it's not it's AM, AMD is not necessarily playing in this market right now or they're not putting resources behind it and the vendors are quite happy to currently work with Intel um, on designing you know that sort of Intel designs and you know taking the benefits of the incentives that happen there um, so as as part of this um, a company reached out to me um, called simply NUC they're a big NUC vendor here in the UK um, and you know their page is full of Intel 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 NUCs because they actually you know sell and configure the actual you know not not like the gigabyte bricks but actual NUCs um, and if you scroll down far enough you'll see uh, you know AMD embedded designs um, I think they have two designs on the website now and they're using the um, the epic 1000 series so first generation zen epic in their in long life embedded systems so these are systems that will go out in the field and be there for 15 years you know they're fanless so they're not so they don't have any moving parts that can fail there's a certain amount of redundancy here and they're you know rugged type systems um, and uh, the ceo of simply nook actually gave me a statement that i'd like to read for you now um, so to clarify, Simply Nook are a platinum Intel technology partner, right? So they, they're involved in this quite somewhat. Um, so the CEO, Aaron Ro Rossell, uh, says, We value our relationships with both Intel and AMD. Both partners provide us incentives in a positive way to help us with our campaigns and promotions. You know, confirming that it's not just Intel with these incentives. Um, as the world leading, world's leading NUC and mini PC specialist, we plan to continue to proliferate Intel NUC and aggressively grow our mini PC, mini PC business with AMD in order to support our markets and customers. That pretty much gels with what I've said here, right? That, you know, despite simply NUC only offering two AMD systems at this time, um, it's because AMD's mini PC business, at least on the consumer and commercial side, isn't going full guns right now maybe the embedded side is AMD has a very strong embedded um, embedded market so, so most of the machines that you see in Vegas if you ever go to Vegas the one on bandits they all seem to be powered by AMD systems you know remember the old G series and the G series is still going on um, but mini PC yeah they're more into the embedded stuff right now um, we will see Renoir in a mini PC you can bet your bottom dollar on it um, I'd stay tuned to Zotac, they seem to be the most up to date with all this. And yeah, I would love other mini PC vendors to also use uh, AMD chips in their designs. We're just going to have to wait a while. So thank you all for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You know, this is YouTube, I've got to say that. And uh, you've been watching Tech Tech Potato. Thank you.